Today, we'll discuss the steps involved when you break your wrist, from diagnoses to treatment, from healing to occupational therapy. So what do we mean by a wrist fracture? Particularly, we're talking about distal radius fractures. The end of the radius, or the distal radius, is the most common bone to break in the body. Because when we fall, our instinct is to catch ourselves, and that force can often break the bone. It can involve falling from a height or even from ground level with weakened bones that have osteoporosis or osteopenia. A broken wrist can also be caused by trauma such as a car or motorcycle crash. When your distal radius is broken, you'll feel pain and swelling. It can be hard to move or even use the hand and wrist. Sometimes the fingers tingle or the fingertips may even feel numb. When you visit Florida Orthopedic Institute's urgent care, the first priority is to have x-rays of the wrist and then have it stabilized, usually in a splint. The splint prevents movement to help reduce pain until you can see the orthopedic specialist. Often you may have needed a reduction of the bone to get it back into a better position. There are several types of wrist fractures and they're not all treated the same. Additional tests such as x-rays of the forearm and or elbow and a CAT scan may be needed. Each fracture is different and has its unique characteristics that impacts the treatment outcome. Treatment is based on many factors, including the type of fracture, whether it's displaced, unstable, or open, your age, health, job, hobbies, activity level, whether it's your dominant hand, and the presence of other injuries. Your surgeon will evaluate specific factors, including an uneven joint surface or if you've lost normal anatomic parameters, such as height, inclination, or tilt of the bone. If these are beyond certain angles or measurements, then research shows you may be better off having surgery for an improved potential outcome. Your physician will discuss all options for your treatment and which is the best for your needs. Non-surgical options are always evaluated before surgery is recommended. When the decision is made to proceed with non-surgical treatment, often a padded cast or splint is used to support the wrist in order to provide some pain relief from the initial discomfort of the fracture. Generally, a padded splint is used in the initial stages while swelling subsides. This is then followed by a rigid cast. The cast may be placed at your original consultation or at a follow-up appointment, depending on multiple factors. Over-the-counter non-steroidal anti-inflammatories such as ibuprofen can be taken to reduce pain as well as swelling. But if severe pain persists, your physician may prescribe a stronger medication. And elevating your wrist and hand with a pillow and using ice and definitely elevating so that water flows out of the arm into the body can help ease swelling and pain. Finger motion is also strongly encouraged to assist with range of motion and also assist with reducing the swelling. A cast may need to remain on for six weeks. Regular follow-ups and x-rays can determine if the cast becomes too loose after any swelling goes down and if a new cast is needed. When there is significant displacement of the fracture, the decision to proceed with surgery is made. This is because it is felt that the fracture is not likely to heal correctly with non-operative treatment. Surgery to repair the fracture utilizes temporary pins or permanent screws and plates, depending on the type of fracture you have, the number of fragments, and the degree of displacement. Wrist surgery is often an outpatient procedure, but sometimes will require an overnight stay. Whether you have surgery or not, your wrist needs to fully heal before returning to regular activity to avoid re-injuring the fracture. Occupational therapy helps reduce any lingering symptoms to help bring back mobility of your wrist and hand. It is important to prescribe a tailored therapy program to help recover motion, strength, and function. Recovery time varies and depends on a lot of different factors. It is not unusual for full recovery to take months or even up to a year. Even then, some patients may still have stiffness or aching. If discomfort persists, a home exercise program can be discussed with your therapist. Florida Orthopedic Institute's hand and wrist team features Tampa Bay's greatest number of years of combined experience in hand and microvascular surgery with fellowship trained physicians and a comprehensive staff of occupational therapists that specialize in hand therapy for a continuum of care.